Hello everybody, I am still the Dark Demon Werewolf. Like I promised I'd be releasing another Top 10 Mario Party Countdown. This one being the unfortunate Mario Party 2. Now if I know the internet like I think I do, you guys really love it when people are in pain, misery, and agony. Well, this is probably the most painful Top 10 I've had the displeasure of making. So, let my nightmare commence! And let your entertainment be place would be Honeycomb Havoc. Yes, definitely not a fun mini game, but compared to all the other mini games I'm left with for Mario Party 2, well, this one sucks the least. Pretty much this mini game is so long and drawn out that even if you were to get eliminated first, go to the fridge and pick up a good soda. You can chug the thing down and get back to the game before it's finished, most likely. It's also not a very fair minigame, because even if you have friends or computer, either way, they're gonna try and screw you to the point where you're left with nothing to pick from but a honeycomb hive that will get you eliminated. Oh, next place, please. Oh, not this mini game. Shock, drop, and roll is definitely not a fun or fair mini game. Though it's still more fun than getting eliminated, going in the kitchen, and grabbing a soda to sip up while you wait for it to finish. Okay, I'm getting thirsty again. Anyways, even though I don't really like this mini game all that much, it actually got on this list because of the mini game cart. Ironically enough, if you practice there enough, you'll be good enough to dodge anything that the person at the control panel will throw at you. Trust me. Play it down there a few times and you'll definitely be good enough to call yourself the king. No. No, 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 no! I don't want to put this nightmare on my list. Shell Shocked gets number 8 as much as it pains me to say it. This minigame, it's a great idea at first. A little free-for-all, everybody's shooting each other, two health points apiece. Don't play it in the minigame card, just forget about trying to get all the battle minigames. Oh my god. In there, they don't go for a free-for-all. It's three-on-one, and it's a nightmare. Save yourself. SAVE YOURSELF! Mommy, please tell me that the bad old shell shock is gone. Please. Oh, um, y'all are still here? <clears throat> uh, anyways, Tile Driver definitely isn't as traumatic as the other mini games that I've played. Although, it is definitely boring. Honeycomb Havoc like boring. The only reason why it gets the spot it does on my list is because, unlike Honeycomb Havoc, it's nice. Short and sweet. Finally, we're done with the god awful nightmare mini games and on to some good but glitchy ones. In Move to the Music, it's pretty much a game of Simon Says, with one character being Simon and the other lucky people getting to do as they say. Pretty much, the advantage ironically goes in to the three people rather than the one person, as long as they all have a decent memory. Me, not so much. The glitch here is if Simon hits A, Z, or B, you'll have to enter it in a little bit earlier than any of the control stick movements. Wait, why is this recording? What am I doing? No, number five is an error, and it's not a joke this time at all. I really did put bumper balls as number five. Let me explain something right now. I kind of bend the rules, but it would have been Mario Party 2's top nine mini games otherwise if I didn't do this. Although the lava stage of bumper balls doesn't count because yeah, that is definitely a hundred percent remake of bumper balls. The other two areas aren't. I mean, the gameplay mechanics are just a little bit too different to be called a remake in my opinion, but then again, you guys might have another issue, but hey, my list, so get over it. 
Sneak and Snore is one of those games I enjoyed much more as a kid than I do now. Back then, I didn't know the simple fact of, oh, I don't know, this game is broken. Pretty much trying to watch when the chain chomp's gonna wake is gonna do you no good. You're gonna have to memorize it and pretty much guess each time. Other than that little factor, it's a fun mini game, and I do have a tip for you. If you're pretty much at the end of the level and the chain chomp wakes up, run for it! Looney Lumberjacks is pretty much like Mario Party 1's Balloon Burst in both the sense that it uses the same style to win the minigame and for the fact that after Mario Party 2 it's had a lot of ripoffs of it afterwards. I mean really, go back and look at how much carpenter work you do. Finally, the last two minigames are actually good with nothing bad to say about him for once. In Dizzy Dancing, the controls are messed up as all can be and they're supposed to be. It should be called Dizzy Dancing for a reason after all. Even though the minigame is very short, the only problem I have with it is why do we need to punch people when we're already dizzy and drunk like hell? Here we are, my number one pick for Mario Party 2 minigames, Archer Rivals. No joke, this is why I pick a 3 on 1 minigame. It's actually a very fair 3-on-1 minigame, and as long as you're a board and you're not wedged between a Boo, Toad, or a Koopa Kid, it actually is fair. Otherwise, you're pretty much a sitting duck for the whole game. As far as the gameplay mechanics go, I found it pure awesome that if you play as Luigi, he has his own style versus Donkey Kong, for instance. They all hold their bow differently. Well, that takes care of this top 10 minigame countdown. Finally, my nightmare is over. That is, till we get to Mario Party 7. Oh, God. And anyways, like I promised, I shall be working on a Mario Party 3 minigame top 10 countdown list. And it should be up by tomorrow this time, or earlier, hopefully, honestly. But... I'll see you guys then, and sorry, you're not going to see as much pain and suffering in that one. It's actually one of my favorites.